this fifth video on the Gospel of Matthew, I'd like to speak a little bit about the parables that we find in Matthew's Gospel. Now, in the Gospels, parables appear in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In Mark, there are a few parables. There's really not a lot, especially the parables of sowing the seed, of an evil enemy putting weed seed in, in a field, etc. In Luke, there's a lot of parables, and they especially speak about the importance of turning to God to receive forgiveness for our sins. In Matthew, there's a series of different parables. And the main emphasis in the Gospel of Matthew is, in the, is on the idea that we will one day face the last judgment. God is very merciful. God gives us a lot of time to turn our hearts back to him. But eventually, we're going to face a last judgment. Now, that might come at the end of time, the end of the world, or it might come at our own personal end when we die. Either way, we should be prepared. For example, we have the parable of the ten virgins. Remember, there are five wise virgins who bring extra oil with themselves and five foolish virgin, virgins who don't. When the bridegroom finally arrives, he's late. He arrives and the wise virgins have enough oil to recharge their lamps. The foolish don't, and they have to go off to the market. Now, sometimes people will say, well, weren't those wise virgins also selfish? And that's not the point of the parable. The point of the parable is we should always be prepared. We don't know how much time we have. We might live another 20 years. We might die tonight. So we should be ready for the final judgment whenever it comes. Then we have the parable of the sheep and the goats. The shepherd separates sheep from goats. Now, I've been told that sheep and goats look a lot more similar to each other in the times of Jesus. So it took a bit of separating when they were dividing the flock. But the sheep represent those people who were generous, who were compassionate. They fed the poor, they clothed the naked, they visited prisoners. And notice the parable doesn't say only those prisoners who were innocent. It's all the prisoners. Because in the Gospels, they recognize that sinners, even though they brought their own difficulties upon themselves, nevertheless are hurting. We should reach out to them with compassion. The goats represent those who are not generous, who are not good. Now, why does Jesus have it in for goats? That was a question that was asked during one of my sessions of adult ed. And finally, I found an answer. Sheep, when they eat grass, tend to eat it to the roots, but they leave the roots in the ground. So when the next rain come, comes, the grass grows again. Whereas goats will eat the grass and pull out the roots so it'll never grow again. Sheep, when they drink from the stream, will stand on the bank and drink the water, not muddying the water. Goats will jump right in the stream and muddy the water, not really caring that the muddy water is carried to those animals that are downstream. Sheep are generous. Goats represent those who are not. And so we have this, this parable which shows us that the truly righteous person is the person who's compassionate. We also have the parable of the vineyard. A man owns a vineyard and he hires workers. Some work the entire day, some half the day, some work only a couple hours. And they're all paid the same pay, a denarius. Now, a denarius in the ancient world was a day's wage. The people who worked only a couple hours are thrilled. They got a full day's pay. But the people who worked a full day are a little jealous because the others have received more than they did. And they said, this is not fair. When we talk about fair, we're often applying our own human standards to fair. And it often has a lot to do with what we receive, not what true justice is. And remember, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus redefines the word justice as mercy, as compassion. And so Jesus says, is it any business of yours if the owner of the vineyard gives extra money out of his generosity? What does this teach us? That we, Jesus will judge us according to what we're capable of doing that he doesn't expect us to be perfect. Now, in the Gospel of Matthew, it does say, be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect, but that means perfect in love, not perfect in deeds. He expects us, he expects us to do the best we can, and he grades us on a curve. Who is the greater saint, Mother Teresa of Calcutta or Charles Manson? 
Now, if I were a betting man, I'd bet on Mother Teresa, but the actual answer is we don't know. Maybe Mother Teresa only used 90% of the incredible gifts that God gave her. And maybe Charles Manson used 110% of what little he had. It doesn't seem that way, judging it from the external values. But we can't see into the hearts. We leave that to God. And if God wants to invite Charles Manson to heaven, who are we to complain? Who are we to say it's not fair? It's God's generosity, God's compassion. And let's face it, if we really loved God and loved our neighbor, we would be thrilled that he were, was forgiven. Because this is a person we wouldn't expect to be able to share in God's goodness. And God in his generosity has nevertheless invited him into his mercy. I'm not saying that Charles Manson's in heaven. We don't know. We leave that to God. Pope Saint uh, John Paul II said, we don't know if anyone other than Satan is in hell. Now notice he didn't say no one's in hell. He said, we don't know. We leave that to God. And so what do the parables in Matthew's gospel teach us? They teach us that today is the day to convert. A lot of people will show up at a wake and they say, you know, I wish I would have made peace with so-and-so, but now it's too late. We don't want that to happen. Today we get on the phone, we make peace with, the, with our friends and relatives with whom we've been feuding. And remember, the reason we forgive them is not because they deserve it, not because they'll stop doing what they're doing. The reason we forgive them is because they need it. They need our love and healing because the bad things they've done to us are just manifestations of their brokenness, and we feel bad for them. We want them to be healed and to live in God's love. And why is it always us? Why, why are we always the ones that have to forgive? Why don't they forgive once in a while? And the answer to that is simple. We can. They can't. Maybe God has given us the gift to forgive and we're responsible for that gift. And may God bless us.